my name is Callum and I will be discussing a few cases with regard to the law of the sea. Normally cases on law of the sea are not much discussed so I thought of writing some cases so that uh, any student of uh, law who is following law of the sea uh, would find some interest in these cases. So whatever the law you know at the end of the day it's the cases that will determine the scope of the law unless and until the law reaches the level of cases and there's enough cases the law is kind of incomplete so this is a law where which is still developing uh, the reason being the cases on the law of the sea are you know coming up just now naturally because uh, the law of the sea is something that uh, came up in 1980s got firmed up in 1990s so it's only the beginning years still First case that I'm going to talk about is case of sinking of Armalone. That's the name of the ship uh, that happened in the 1920s, late 1920s. I think the background to this might be of interest. During this time, USA has banned uh, alcohol. We call it prohibition. So manufacture sale of alcohol was a crime in the USA during the time of President Woodrow Wilson. So during this time, it was not uncommon uh, for the supplies of uh, liquor, here rum, uh, to be brought into American shores, right, from other parts of uh, the world, like Mexico, maybe Canada. But this was involving the supply of such content, rum, basically a boatload of rum from Canada. So uh, take a look at it. The stories, you know, the the coast guard of usa found out this particular boat and they have given chase uh, but the captain of the, the the particular schooner we call them the boat had escaped uh, beyond the, uh, the you know um, the zone that america had the control about 12 nautical miles and gone beyond and then um, two US boats gunboats have tried to chase him and you know he had escaped back uh, into the oceans but they continued with the pursuit for more than 200 nautical miles and they are these boats have opened fire on the particular boat and as a result the boat has sunk um, you know there was a case thereafter against uh, the USA for violating the law of the sea, violating the rules of the law of the sea. So uh, this is a particular gunboat uh, that is alleged to have shot at uh, the particular schooner about 200 miles off US coast. There were three things that the US court had to determine. Number one, a commission they appointed at the time. We did not have the law of the sea, but this case is still important. Some of the cases that were decided long before the Law of the Sea Convention was to happen are still valid. That's how it goes. Cases are not exactly the cases that were decided after the Law of the Sea Convention into the 1990s and beyond, but long before that as well. Still relevant today. So the Commission had to discuss these three points. Was it a hospital, hot pursuit? I'm sorry. Um, did they use proportionate and reasonable, uh, you know, uh, what you call action against this particular you know, the boat running away with the rum? If it is not hot pursuit, should USA pay compensation to them? So these are the questions before the commission. As I told in the beginning, you know, this was the year of prohibition where sale, manufacture, even consumption of liquor was a crime uh, during this era of prohibition. So there was a lot of illegal liquor being brought to USA from other countries. So there was hyperactivity by the Coast Guard and the Navy to prevent this from happening because prohibition was the country's law at the time. But of course later America gave up the law. Prohibition was a failure. The story says that Americans were drinking more alcohol during the prohibition than even before. So it was a failure of a law. The next president removed this law. 
So this is where it happened, New Orleans, what's black marked, south of USA. The particular ship was trying to escape into, uh, through the Floridas, down into the sea. For 200 miles they've chased. There's a story based on this particular, you know, the, uh, case also. The case name is Story of uh, Armalone. Uh, it's there. You can check it online. It's an animation series because it's a pretty interesting case. This is a particular Armalone ship. And let's see the decisions made by the commissioners. Determination, we call it. Okay. Yeah. Any chase has to be continuous, should be finishing fast. That's what the commission said. You can't chase for hundreds of miles for a couple of days. No way. And the sinking of the ship. Incidental sinking, yes, sinking, yes, but not intentional. Hot pursuit doesn't allow it. You have to use proportionate, uh, you know, response rather than extravagant, extra response as it happened in this case. The commissioner said that this kind of a sinking of the ship cannot be justified under any way. Yes, the particular boat was doing something illegal, true that, but the legality of the country limits to a particular zone, the territorial zone. Within the territorial zone, yes, you could do things. But beyond that, for so many miles, using number of ships, well, that kind of hot pursuit is not acceptable to the law of the sea now and law of the sea then. So this particular case uh, made a determination making USA liable to the case. A similar case, we call it the San Pedro Pile, 2019. The case came into the court in 2019. Um, the case happened actually in Nigeria, off the coast of Nigeria. A ship belonging to Switzerland. Now that's funny because Switzerland doesn't have a sea. It's a landlocked country, but you don't have to be a landlocked country to have a navy, right? Or oh, ships registered uh, under your country's name. Any country has a power to uh, register ships under their name. So Switzerland had such ships, such a ship belonging to Switzerland, flagged Swiss, right? Um, was caught doing illegal transfer of oil. We call it the bunker transfers from one ship to the other off the coast of Nigeria within the exclusive economic zone. So the Nigerian police or the Coast Guard have come up and arrested the captain and the crew and they've been uh, jailed but then uh, Switzerland made a complaint to uh, yeah international tribunal for law, law of the sea it lost so that's a legal body responsible for adjudicating on cases related to violations or alleged violations of the law of the sea the case went on and in this particular case actually uh, the, the particular you know the international tribunal for the law of the sea ordered nigeria to release the suspects the captain and the crew as well as the boat on the promise that switzerland pays them a bond of 14 million uh, US dollars as a bond promised that when Nigeria begins legal action they would be uh, brought to Nigeria but bringing of uh, this uh, captain and the crew from Nigeria would make the case weak right it's highly unlikely that they will ever go back to Nigeria to face trial perhaps what made the decision this way was the court may have not been happy about the conditions of the Nigerian prisons uh, where these uh, ship members, crew members are also uh, incarcerated or kept. So normally the courts would give practical decisions when they have practical challenges. So this is one such scenario. Imagine inside a Nigerian prison one of the crew members dying or getting injured or worse, then the entire blame will be on the commission right, for doing nothing. So, legally Nigeria has a right to keep uh, people in prison for what crimes done inside the exclusive economic zone. 
that was actually transfer oil from one to the other. So Nigeria has a legal action. Sri Lanka also has a legal action for such a thing because it's obvious legal action banned by the country. And if it's happening inside the territorial Z, contiguous zone, OEZ, we have the, you know, we could ask for the right to detain the people and take legal action. But of course, the other country has the power to make a complaint against us in the yeah, International Tribunal of the Law of the Sea. They would make the final determination. So they would be making a practical decision. The practical decision this time was releasing them. They may have been worried about the security, safety about the prisoners in Nigerian prisons. So this is one case where ideally for what happens in the exclusive economic zone, the territorial nation has certain degree of right but doesn't have the right to punish and arrest. But the thing is, if the crime is a serious one, like here, like a banned one, the other country can take action. But here the court has intervened because court was not happy about the, you know, the prison conditions in, you know, uh, this particular country. Right? So, tried to, Nigeria, tried to, while trying to stop it only, they have uh, given the order to, yeah, release uh, the prisoners from Nigeria. Very unlike decision, but it was taken. This is Nigeria. Nigeria has a huge problem, not just Nigeria, entire African coast. Lots of the uh, criminality that takes place inside the contiguous zone is beyond the legal control of Nigeria or any other country. So the high possibility of them escaping is pretty much there. So because of this only, a lot of people are unhappy with the decision making, uh, made by the commission, ordering Nigeria to release the suspect's court. So as I uh, described earlier, the practical decision making is a thing that runs a court. So they would have been more concerned about the safety of the um, crew rather than the law there. Next case after this, yes. Kosa says for the right to persecute people, court in act committing violations of the law. So bunkering from ship to ship was illegal under Nigerian law. So since it was done, Nigeria has a right to take legal action. Next one, the No Star. This case is connected to a Panamanian registered ship. The incident happened in a, happened a while ago actually. It took quite a long time to take legal action. Read it please. So it was a Panamanian registered ship. It was supplying gas and oil um, out of the territorial uh, seas of Italy. The ship was caught with the support of uh, Spain. But in the case that followed, we'll find out the case. So this kind of bunkering was happening outside the zone of the country, outside the territorial sea of the country. So the question before the tribunal was whether it's legal or otherwise. So it's a very fresh case. So Italy, countries like Italy and all do not have huge coastal zones because of uh, the countries being packed against each other, not like in Sri Lanka. So their territorial sea is just about 12 and that's it. Beyond that, it's international sea for them. So this is Italy. So bunkering is one like that, transferring oil from one ship to the other. Um, this is illegal as we learnt in Nigeria. It's not discussed in Sri Lanka law. And it's uh, made uh, illegal in Italy also, but within the territorial zone, not outside the zone. So, this is what Italy said. Bunkering down international waters by the ship was part of the scam done inside Italy. Yes, they were doing this conduct outside the territorial waters, but they were connected to some wrongs in Italy. So, we should have the chance to take legal action. The court, it lost International Tribunal of the Law of the Sea for the Law of the Sea did not agree. They rejected it. 
So uh, because the action has taken place outside the territory of C, so Italy should not be having right. But it was a majority decision. Some uh, spoke in favor of uh, Italian court because uh, the country's right to take legal action against violations happening should be there. But the fact that it happened beyond the territorial sea was one reason where the court was unwilling to give them compensation. Take a look. Yeah, the court says has a right to hot food pursuit, right? In the territorial sea and onto certain events in uh, the contiguous zone also. So, but it happened, it, uh, how effective the law should be applied depends on case by case basis. That's the thing. Now, the countries do take action even outside the territorial sea. It's neat. Take a look at what Australia is doing every now and then. You know, stopping ships and turning them away, which is a violation of the refugee convention. Whoever the refugees coming in should be given a reasonable hearing or Australia is not hearing any of it, they are turning back. But this turning back is done not inside the territorial waters, even past the contiguous zone. So this was a different kind of a case. We call it Enrica Lexi case. It happened in India, year was 2012. The ship in trouble or the boat in trouble was Anthony and check the story. So in the contiguous zone uh, an Italian crude carrier that means an oil tanker was caught or was arrested by the Italian Navy for uh, the suspicion of shooting at a fishing boat which they have actually done but that is within 20 nautical miles from Kerala but outside the territorial sea. After shooting incident has occurred, the ship had gone about its way. Um, so this is the territorial seas of India, quite big, isn't it? But in some areas, very small. Out here, the Andaman Sea is there. They also, India has some territorial sea. Take a look at India, right? It's become a territorial sea. So the ship was going within the contiguous zone. The question was, can the ship open fire against the boat? Well, this is the period where there was a lot of uh, the ship and the lane, area where it was done. This is the picture of shipping. Take a look at this. So. Uh, Piracy in the sea was a massive problem in the Indian Ocean. So every ship in the region, even today, carry uh, security officials with uh, sufficient firepower, even inside the uh, containers. Because piracy happens uh, pretty close to uh, Sri Lanka. Even to the point of coming close to Sri Lanka, see the range of piracy. So the ships has to be, ship has to be pretty much on the guard. So they have marshals or naval officers carrying weapons there right so this is the story of the case pca decided that the maritime have yeah marines have immunity from prosecution in india because the particular action has happened in the contiguous zone india doesn't have the power uh, to take action over wrongs that happen in the contiguous zone so said the pca uh, permanent Court of Appeal, arbitration we call it. So this is not under ITLA, some other law only this case was decided. So take a look, only the flag state, what's the mean of flag state? The country uh, that um, has given the registration to the ship, we call it the flag state. Only the flag state has the power to take action against a ship caught uh, doing wrong inside the contiguous zone. So, but uh, the court, however, said uh, for the loss of life and, uh, you know, the damage to the boat, the court ordered the particular Italian company to pay compensation, kind of shaping up both sides. This is a particular ship. 
So imagine Italian Marines are not involved. And again, I told you, right, this was again a practical decision because India was a powerful nation and the act was uh, Navy uh, members of another nation's Navy shooting at citizens of another nation. So it was not just a fisherman or not just a captain of the ship or the crew, right? It was a Navy. Uh, so making the two Navy people, uh, you know, soldiers to be imprisoned for a long time and making India win the case would be not exactly practically helpful because it's anyway a nation's Navy that was accused of, right? Two soldiers. So court always look at the practicality of the case without just turning the page and making the decisions. Court is made of humans. Humans are there to make decisions on a case by case basis. So here uh, the decision by the uh, court was that it was wrong for Indian Navy to shoot at the Italian Marines because they were doing a security duty, an obvious security duty uh, due to the piracy and other things involved. So uh, the court was not willing to punish uh, the Indian uh, punish the Italian Navy uh, soldiers inside the territory of uh, India. But uh, the court said the flag state has a jurisdiction. If the flag states want to take action against them, yes. And the court also said that uh, the Navy has to pay compensation to the uh, people who are affected by opening the fire. So, uh, So these are the research elements with, the, with regard to the case. I've added up all the links if you want to file, uh, find up uh, further information about it, which might be of help. You know, marine law is extremely important for the future. Uh, one key aspect of marine law is, yes, law of the seas, especially within which boundary can we take legal action and other things like the hot pursuits and the use of criminal law. Of course, to this, there are other laws are adding up. Um, but focus and understanding of the law of the sea is a must. So see you in another class.